This video was made in collaboration with Narutopedia. For more information, check out the link in the description. The Life of Ishiki Otsutsuki from Naruto Ishiki Otsutsuki was a member of the Otsutsuki clan's main family and the leader of Kara. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Ishiki Otsutsuki. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background Over 1,000 years ago, Ishiki came to Earth alongside Kaguya with the objective to plant a tree and harvest its chakra fruit. While Kaguya, being lower ranked, was planned to be sacrificed to create the chakra fruit, she instead turned on Ishiki, leaving him on the verge of death after destroying Ishiki's lower half. Encountering Jigen and not having the strength to implant a comma on him, Ishiki devised a desperate plan and shrunk himself to enter the monk's ear in order to survive his injury by absorbing Jigen's nutrients. Through time, Ishiki came to control Jigen's entire body and embed a comma onto his host. With Kaguya's betrayal and eventual sealing leaving Ishiki alone, he was left with no other option but to use himself via Jigen as the sacrifice for the Ten Tails in order to make it bloom into a god tree. With this intent, he prepared to find a new vessel for revival once he feeds Jigen and himself to the beast. Passing on reviving himself through Jigen as his body would probably die within a few days as it wouldn't be able to bear his chakra, he instead opted to cultivate Jigen's body as much into an Otsutsuki as possible to be fed to the Ten Tails for its growth. At the same time, Ishiki began preparing for a new host. Upon the formation of Kara, Ishiki through Jigen became its leader, and the inners collectively agreed on obtaining the chakra fruit by cultivating a new god tree huge enough to devour all life on earth. Eventually, Ishiki found Kawaki, after Delta tested the boy's blood as a viable candidate to be a vessel in the anime. Jigen approached Kawaki's abusive father with a large sum of money to buy the boy for his plans. After taking custody of the boy, Ishiki introduced Jigen as his new father and reassured him. With the assistance of Amado, who at some point modified Ishiki's vessel with scientific ninja tools, the two attempted to transfer Kama to Kawaki, Code, and 13 other boys in an experiment. Kawaki was the only success, while Code gained an incomplete white Kama and the other 13 perished. Despite promising him safety, Ishiki put Kawaki through grueling training to master the Kama, and would constantly berate him as only having value as a vessel, striking the boy whenever he questioned him. Meanwhile, Code was recruited as his most loyal subordinate, Ao Ark. In the anime, Ishiki contacted Amato to discuss the development of Kawaki, knowing that he was already into phase 3 of their plans. Amato insisted that while it was technically true, the data was still too weak to continue with phase 3. Ishiki decided to transfer Kawaki for a field test. Later, despite the smooth moving of Kawaki onto the blimp, there was a malfunction causing the blimp to crash, which Ishiki was alerted to. Ishiki held a meeting with the other members of Kara to discuss the urgent situation, during which Koji was given the task of recovering Kawaki. As he dispelled the Genjutsu, Ishiki voiced that their group must recover the vessel at all costs. Kawaki Arc while eating a meal with Delta, she voiced her frustrations about the time it was taking to recover Kawaki, during which Ishiki gave her permission to partake in the recovery of the vessel, with the condition that she follow Koji's ways. Later, after Delta's decisive defeat by the 7th Hokage, upon Ishiki silencing the argument between her and the other inners and asking on what Koji was doing, she reported that Koji was holding off on retrieving Kawaki to study Boruto after learning that the boy obtained his own Kama. Smirking at this development, Jigen deduced that Momoshiki was behind this. Later, he transported himself to the dimension containing a Ten Tails, and began speaking nonchalantly to it. Failing to eat his vessel, Ishigi comments on it being too soon as needed to complete his vessel before absorbing its chakra using his Kama. Afterwards, Ishigi intended to visit Boruto and Kawaki. While attempting to capture Kawaki from Naruto Uzumaki's household, Jigen transported Naruto to another dimension with the intent of abandoning him there to die, but was attacked by Sasuke. During the ensuing battle, Jigen was driven back and resorted to unleashing the full power of his Kama, manifesting Ishiki's personality. As he quickly overpowered Naruto and Sasuke, pummeling them into submission, Jigen's body began to break down, 
which frustrated Ishiki as he disabled Naruto and Sasuke with giant black rods and reaffirmed his dire need to possess Kawaki. Revealing the crater acting as their battlefield was actually a gigantic coffin, Ishiki intended to kill Sasuke as he could escape any time and seal Naruto and Kurama within it, as he couldn't exert the power needed to kill Naruto due to Jigen being weakened. Sasuke escaped with Naruto's help and Ishiki brushed off Naruto's insults and revealed he was never interested in him as Kurama noted that he was after Boruto for his Kama, promising to kill Naruto if he escaped as Ishiki successfully sealed Naruto within the coffin, which he shrank to a normal size. Before teleporting away, Ishiki cursed Jigen's weakness as a vessel. Having returned to Kara's headquarters, Ishiki had Amato treat Jigen's body, with the scientist informing him that it would take two days to fully recover. Excited with the progression of Kawaki's Kama, he believed that it was due to exposure from Boruto's own mark. From this, Jigen strongly believed that the two of them would become the perfect Otsotsuki and form a god tree to consume the planet. He also assured Amato that everyone would get what was promised. Afterwards, he was approached by Koji, whom he asked for a report from. Informing Kawaki wasn't recovered, Koji questioned why he was tasked with this mission when Ishiki could have teleported to his location. Justifying his actions, Ishiki accused Koji and Amato of crashing the airship carrying Kawaki to allow him to escape. Questioning his motives, Koji attacked Jigen, leading to the two fighting and Ishiki being informed Koji wanted to kill him. As Ishiki continued to repel Koji's various assaults, he voiced that the latter was nothing but a tool, having committed himself so fully to one goal. As Koji continued his attack while Ishiki fully unleashed his Kama, he eventually caught Jigen off guard, summoning a giant wall of flames. As Jigen failed to absorb them, Koji explained that he summoned naturally occurring flames void of chakra, meaning the mark was powerless before it as the flames began to consume him. Jigen tried to shrink the flames but could not maintain it for long enough due to his body reaching his limits. As Jigen's body was killed and Kawaki's Kama had yet to fully decompress, Ishiki was forced to fully reincarnate using Jigen as an imperfect vessel. He instantly shrunk and dispersed the flames around him. Ishiki began shrinking various targets around him, forcing Koji to dodge. Ultimately, Ishiki's assault destroyed Koji's mask, revealing him as a clone of Jiraiya created by Amato. Ishiki openly commended Koji and Amato's manipulations, having forced him into using an imperfect resurrection that was slowly killing him. At the same time, Ishiki viewed Koji as a fool himself, having been made as a sacrificial pawn, knowing that Koji would have no chance of defeating him. Koji brushed him off and entered Sage Mode. The increase in power let Koji hold his own against Ishiki for a period, but he ended the battle by summoning massive stone pillars to crush Koji's left arm and flank. As Ishiki mocked Koji's existence, he summoned a toad to allow for a retreat. Deciding not to waste any time, as his body would fail in two or three days, Ishiki immediately teleported to Konohagakure to rebrand Kawaki with Akama. Upon casually entering the village, he paid no concern to other shinobi. He was quickly intercepted by Naruto, shocking Ishiki by the Hokage's escape from his seal. He demanded to be given Kawaki. When Naruto refused, Ishiki began shrinking various structures to destroy the village. Naruto quickly attacked him at full power, but Ishiki calmly overwhelmed Naruto. Ultimately, a timely assist from Sasuke's Rinnegan saved Naruto. Ishiki found their efforts pointless as Sasuke began throwing shurikens recklessly, only for Ishiki to shrink them all. Sasuke then launched his sword at Ishiki. When he failed to shrink it, it was revealed to be Boruto transformed. He activated his Kama and teleported Ishiki and himself to a separate dimension. Shocked by how much Boruto could wield of Momoshiki's power without proper training, Ishiki soon found himself joined by Sasuke and Naruto to help Boruto. As the shinobi faced down Ishiki, he grabbed Boruto and took to the air. Intrigued by how far Boruto's Kama had matured, Sasuke switched places with Boruto, but Ishiki blocked Sasuke's attack and kicked him aside. With Naruto and Sasuke's teamwork, they managed to push Ishiki on the defense as he began shrinking all their attacks. However, Ishiki began manifesting and manipulating massive black cubes that separated the duo. Ishiki pinned down Sasuke and moved to kill him with his own sword, only for Boruto to jump in the way, causing Ishiki to hesitate, leading to Boruto suspecting Ishiki didn't want to kill him. While Ishiki tried to deny such a claim, Boruto threatened to kill himself with a kunai if he didn't back down. Ishiki, however, shrunk the kunai out of Boruto's hands and quickly subdued him, knocking Sasuke out in the process. 
Ishiki explained that once Boruto had fully transformed into an Otsutsuki, he would be fed the Ten Tails to nourish it into a god tree. Suddenly, Naruto knocked Ishiki away. While Ishiki offered to leave them alone for now if they handed over Kawaki, Naruto decided to use a last-ditch strategy of transforming into a new form, with which he began pressuring and overwhelming Ishiki. In time, the strain of Baryon mode began catching up with Naruto, allowing Ishiki to comprehend its life-draining aspect. However, Ishiki began spitting up blood and realized that Naruto's new power also drained his life force when they made contact. Naruto continued to attack Ishiki, who managed to take advantage of his chakra connection to Kawaki's prosthetic hand to teleport him through the field before his time ran out. As Kawaki tried to escape Ishiki, he opted to use Kawaki's love for Naruto against him, assaulting the downed Hokage. Kawaki ultimately showed himself and attacked using the ninjutsu Naruto taught him. Ishiki easily overpowered it and branded Kawaki again, smugly declaring his victory only to see the mark disappear. As the horrified Ishiki asked how this was possible, Kawaki was revealed to only be a shadow clone, marking him insufficient to host the Kama. Finally, Ishiki's time ran out and he crumbles to dust, leaving Kawaki the killing blow as he crushed his disintegrated form into ashes. Despite his demise, ever defiant, Ishiki made contact with Code through his white Kama. Ishiki informed a grief-stricken Code about the events that led to his death. Before finally departing, Ishiki ordered Code to carry on the will of the Yotsotsuki clan. He told Code to capture either Boruto Uzumaki or Kawaki and feed them to the Ten Tails and devour the god fruit to become an Otsutsuki himself and continue evolving. Accepting Ishiki's final decree, Code asked to know the names of those who killed Ishiki so Code could avenge him. Ishiki told him the names before fading away from the land of the living for the final time. Personality Ishiki was arrogant, pragmatic, and remorseless. Common with the rest of his clan, Ishiki cared not for other lives, desiring to live at any costs and furthering his own goals with no concern on how many innocent people must die for it, as shown when he crushed Jigen's mind and completely took over his brain and body. Even fellow clansmen were not above being expendable by him, as he intended to sacrifice Momoshiki's vessel to cultivate a god tree. Even as he overwhelmed Jigen's body with his overwhelming power, he mocked Jigen's tears of pain, declaring him a worthless and defective vessel. In battle, he outright mocked enemies, repeatedly insulting his foes upon overpowering them and relishing in their awe and or fear of his power. He also showed an authoritarian nature, fully capable of commanding respect among the group. He was also shown to be rather vain, storing various trinkets in his pocket dimension, including clothing and glasses of wine. When he faced Naruto and Sasuke, the well-considered two strongest shinobi in history, he was completely unfazed by this. At the same time, his self-confidence didn't prevent Ishiki from praising his opponents and also remaining calm when cornered, even actually thanking them for revealing the weaknesses of his abilities. Likewise, he was willing to admit when he was outwitted, openly declaring Amato's victory and forcing his resurrection in Jigen's body. Like other Otsutsuki, he openly viewed himself as a superior being, looking down on all others as beneath him. Prioritizing his own survival more than almost anything, Ishiki lost his composure when Naruto drained him of his already limited lifespan, showing his fear of a permanent death and his rage at Naruto's mockery. Also, despite his vain attitude, he could genuinely appreciate those who were faithful to him, as he regarded Code as his most beloved, loyal subordinate, naming him his successor to the Otsutsuki will. Ishiki's devotion in cultivating the chakra fruit was such that, even while alone after losing Kaguya, he was willing to feed his own damaged body via his inadequate vessel to the Ten Tails, even if this would result in the fruit's inferior quality. Even more, the fact that he would wait for over a millennium shows remarkable tenacity and patience on his part. At the same time, he would do whatever he deemed necessary to speed up progress in his plans. Even after his death, he was determined to continue his clan's way of evolving by tasking his most loyal and trusted subordinate, Code, to follow in his footsteps and become an Otsutsuki by planting a new god tree on Earth and consuming a chakra fruit, and then to continue to do so across more planets. Ishiki seemed to believe that all living beings have their fates predestined by their genetics, as he stated that Koji, a clone of Jiraiya, was destined to die just like his template due to having inherited his genes. Did you enjoy your video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.